Good morning, I'm Norma Cowley and this is Norma Talks. Every Wednesday I do a little talk and today I'm talking about what's your bottom line. Most of us are used to thinking about bottom lines dealing with the money and, and how finances work and things like that. But we in fact have a bottom line. Now, bottom lines mean, what will you defend? What will you do whatever it takes to defend that feeling or thought? There's two main ones. One is, if you are a mental person, when I mean a thinking person, <clears throat> excuse me, when you say mental, people think maybe, oh, instead, it's not that. It's when you do a lot of thinking. Now, I was incredibly a thinking person. And because I was a thinking person, my bottom line was, I'm not good enough. That was the thought. I would do anything to not have to go there, that I'm not good enough. And the second thing there's if you're an emotional person, if your natural responses are emotionally, your bottom line will be, I'm unlovable. Because love is a feeling. Well, we can talk about it as a concept, but really it represents a feeling, a sense that is going on down. Now, because I knew as so much how the mind worked, because I had to figure that out a lot, the mental self, the mental element overrules when you've got a busy mind. There's no room for feelings. There's no room for inspiration. There's no room for anything. And the funny thing is, or maybe it's not so funny, is that the mind in itself, I found, was not creative on its own. It, it, the intellectual part of you, that may be, but the mental self, the thinking self, the part of you that thinks, 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 usually thinks over and over the same old things. Now, emotions, I believe, now all this is my theory of over the years, many years of study, of reading, of not reading necessarily other people's books, although that was part of it, but reading tarot, reading and how it came to me about certain things, is that emotions, and let me talk about emotions a little bit more. To me, feelings is what it is. Feelings is our body's way of talking to us. It gives us a feeling. And very often what has sparked that feeling is a thought that you've had or something you've seen. But it tends to be thinking. You think something and then you will have a reaction. And so consequently, the key with the emotion is if, you're, if you address it first, and how I learned to do that was to name the feeling. When I named the feeling, the feeling subsided. If I didn't name the feeling, it would just sort of eventually disappear until it came back again. And the same feeling would come back and come back. And I began to realize that feelings in themselves are very much like a river. They need to flow. They need to flow easily. Where when we block them, when we don't address them, when we don't give them a voice, you might say, by saying, oh, well, this, this, you know, I'm feeling this. Not trying to analyze it, but to name the feeling itself, to be with the feeling. What happens is that uh, it, it builds up and builds up and becomes an emotion. So I really differentiate the difference between feelings and emotions. And very often what we're needing to do is clear the emotions, which are usually backed up sometimes for many, many, many years. But so the bottom line of I'm, <clears throat> I'm um, feeling unlovable or I am unlovable comes because we're unable to let the universal love in, we, we're unable to love ourselves effectively because we've got all this blocked emotion in there. And because mind does move and change even though we may have obsessive thinking and we may have thoughts that repeat consistently. Um, one of the things as I began to work along and to find this was the defense system that we have. Now, I want to start off again using a little bit of tarot to explain this. One is here, beginning to feel insecure, beginning to feel unsure of who you are, what you are, how it goes. And you can see the opposition here of thoughts here and this. Now, I have to explain. Um, 
quite often when I do these talks, I have people that come on to the Zoom and uh, talk to me before or talk to me afterwards. And some of these are very good friends of mine. And I found last week, uh, one of them was talking about something that had come up in my life. And she was, uh, I felt I was being pushed to admit something I didn't want to go where I didn't want to go because it was something I felt quite strongly about personally, but I didn't really want to go there. And I immediately, and I noticed this, and one reason I'm talking about this today, because I went, oh, wow, I did this. I said it immediately. I actually said, I do not want to go there. And on that tone, because I did not want to go there, because I did not want to feel a angrier. <laughs> I was saying I was a little ticked off still with something that had happened. But it's when it was being pushed, I realized, I was still kind of upset over how things are because not the actual event that's got that was done, but this consequences to me based on what was done that I felt. And anger comes from helplessness. And if you watched or listened to my last Sunday talk, I talk about helplessness, how important it is behind sad or mad and, and the anger. And I knew that, but I, I noticed myself begin to go here, a little bit insecure, and then definitely get, no, that's, I'm not going there. <clears throat> Excuse me again, I'm not going there. So what happens when that begins? It looks like, well, most of us don't catch it. Most of us don't catch when we go defensive at all. We just think it's normal. And it, and it's, and it may not be all the time. Some people, you know, if you say two words to them, they're immediately into a reaction, which actually is this attitude here. I'm just going to put this. I've got all these different cards up here. This is the king. This is the knight of swords. And he's over an overreactor. I mean, there's no doubt about that. And that's where we can often end up. So I'm not going to pick because I want to show how it builds, how it builds up. And the more we begin to defend our thoughts or our, our position, um, it's because we, we basically remember the bottom line is I'm not good enough. So we don't want to go there because that meant in that mental sense. And then what begins to happen, I'm just trying to make sure which is, but it doesn't glare too much on this. I'll put this on the other side. The <laughs> two of swords here. Uh, all that water, all that emotion behind, I don't want to feel that. And why don't I want to feel that? Is because I'm, I'm not good enough. And if I have to feel it, I'll feel that I'm, I'm unlovable. And people tend to fall in either or category. But it's still not wanting to feel that feeling of not being good enough will elicit, if you're an emotional person, I'm not good enough. And usually that's what we want to, when we're doing, when I'm doing transformation work and things like that, we want to clear that so that you know that you are good enough, but there'll be topics all of a sudden that comes up and you're going to have a reaction. And then why do arguments occur? Five of swords show that. We will defend our position. Even if it hurts someone else, we're going to defend that because we do not want to feel that bottom line. We do not want to feel or accept or know that we're not, we're not good or we haven't done it right. There's some, there's some right and wrong in there somewhere. We don't want to feel that. And although that may sound when I, you know, like, oh, just big, but it's true. And begin to, if you watch yourself, you'll see it, but you can see it in others as well. And what ends up happening is that you will develop what I call attitudes. Now in the tarot, for those, I know some of you have said, thank you for using tarot symbology, but that's where I've learned so much about human psycho psychological or psycho psychology of how we react and respond. And I don't think we're that different from when this was first created and the way this was so that we could understand our behaviors. So the core cards to me are attitudes or i.e. our habits. We do have habits, <sighs> unfortunately. Chocolate and ice cream are mine, but anyway, we all have something. Now, this guy here has a sword over his shoulder. He's ready to defend no matter what. He, he, don't, don't push him too far. He'll snap. You know what I mean by snap. <laughs> and or he'll defend. You go away. In other words, you go away. I don't want, I don't want, and they'll be like that all the time because they're habits, the habits of response. Push me, I'm gonna push back. Or like I held up earlier, you're gonna overreact, totally overreact, be way out of 
what the situation calls for. Now, these are all the swords because to me, the swords are your attitude, you know, all the court cards are attitudes, but swords are the problems and challenges and how we respond to them. Now, the queen in her own way doesn't look defensive. She looks very open, but why does she have a sword stand holding right in front of her? Because she doesn't want to be hurt anymore. She's been hurt for a while. She doesn't want that anymore. But she's also very careful to protect that heart that's inside. And then, of course, we have the king. Now, I rather like the king because he has he's very intellectual. And I like the way the sword is placed because it, he can open up. And plus, in the sky of the, of the original wide and great deck, there are two birds meaning choice. He can choose to be very determined and we need to be determined sometimes in our lives that's not that that's a, a can be a very beneficial thing but the two he can also open he doesn't have to defend himself in a, in a way but what often happens to us is this we become like the emperor we just get stuck we just get stubborn we just don't want to hear. We don't want to know. It doesn't talk about defensiveness so much, but everything does end up in the higher arcana. And I could pick up, pick up sorry, they pull up. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, I could have picked up the devil. I looked at it and I thought, no, that's more That's more the emotional tie-in and there's no opening there. It's really, a, a really emotional. But I wanted to talk about the mind a lot today because that's where everything begins as how to do it. So we don't want to be stubborn like this. We don't want to reject out of sight, out of hand. And I know I've done that. I've done that lots of my life. I guess age does bring a certain sense of wisdom and understanding. Um, but I certainly have gone through and I'll have two other cool, two other cards I pulled out. One was the eight of swords. It was another swords. And it's not really a defensive sword. It's a sad sword. And that's the emotionality part. When we get sad, we forget. We get locked up in our helplessness. We feel helpless. And when we feel helpless, and there's other symbols I could add to that, we, we don't really make the move. But this is the gear between, because the cups are an emotional symbols. And here he is looking at three, which the three before is really happy. And it's where we get stuck. We've been happy and we want it to stay that way. And we, so we begin to get cut off. Arms closed, legs closed. And yet we've got this other element being offered. And it being offered, they're not being open. And because he's not being open, or she, because it goes both ways, eventually, if you go into number five of the cups, they all fall, three of those three that are sitting there fall over. Life needs to have growth. It needs to have change. It needs to have progress. Uh, I, I think I have talked about before how I spent a lot of my life for a, wee, for a while <laughs> just living very peacefully contented. And I wasn't goal setting. I wasn't thinking ahead. I was uh, a little bit, but not really. I wasn't looking at my growth. I wasn't, I was just doing regular things. And what ended up happening, life came along and kind of kicked me in the butt. In other words, get moving. And so no matter what, I still spend quite a bit of time just not doing a lot of things particularly, but I also know that one has to expand, keep expanding. The universe is expanding. That's what they say. So we need to expand. We need to grow beyond these bottom line feelings. Now, we like when, let's, let's take a look at this. What I've got here. Oh, what do I write down here? To know, we need to know the difference between feelings and emotions, which I've, I have addressed, but sometimes it's good to revisit. Thoughts flow like the river. Emotions are more like the rocks in the river that blocks things. So there's no flow. And I find energetically we need a flow. When there's not a flow, things, are not work, things don't work as well as we would like. Also, what you can watch. I, I've watched myself how I move into a defensive position, as I did last week after our show. I, and, and even though it was minor, most people, in fact, I phoned a, my friend after and said, look, I'm really sorry I, I went that way. And because I knew that I, I, instead of, and I did say, I don't want to go there because I knew I didn't want to go there because I'd get riled up again. 
In other words, I'd feed that thought, which would feed the feeling of anger. And I did not want to go there. Because when you, and I was explaining it another time, when I, I released all my anger, and I'll tell you the story about anger, we have a little bit more time here. When I was 10, I hit my younger brother of three years on the head with a toy rifle. And at that point of doing that, because I was angry at him, you know, little brothers, you know what they're like. And at that point I went, I, I can't lose my temper because I will kill somebody. Now that is because in another life, I have killed a person in anger. I know that now. I didn't know that then, of course, at 10. But I made a decision not to be angry. Years go by. 20 years went by, and I always say, thank goodness my husband at the time was six, four and a half, and he was a big man, strong man, because I probably would have killed him. 20 years of stored anger and frustration was not a good thing. Oh yeah, it was calm and easy on the outside, but inside, every time I got angry, that decision I made when I was 10 acted. So I had to do a lot of releasing of anger. Um, and I was very able to, I was taught how to release energy. I was able to release, and it was very, very important for me in many ways because I was quite fragmented and I was able to clear up a lot of things, but especially the anger. So today when I feel angry, when I know it is based on helplessness, cause I had to figure all that out. And I know that I, I am, I am loved. I know that I know all those things, I, but you can still get angry cause you feel helpless. And so now it's new and it's fresh. It's not banked from all those years. But it took a number of years for me because I didn't know the, all the processes. I didn't understand all the, you might say, the, the awareness of it all, which is why I figured it out, why how it all works, is that I found now, I yes, I can get angry. You can't deny anger. Anger is there because you feel helpless. And there are situations that you feel helpless about, that some things you need to accept 100%. Sometimes it's just a matter of um, coming to terms that, Nothing much you can do about that. But it, what is interesting on another aspect of that, if you accept whatever that situation is that made you angry, 100%, you can either easily accept it or you can make a different decision of how to handle it. And that's what I found helped me a lot when I would get into something and feel a little, so I would, you know, just really, okay, let's take a look at this. Accept 100%. I can't do anything with that. But all of a sudden, another thought would come to me and I would be able to do that in a different way. And very often it was, I didn't want to accept it for some reason. When someone passes away and you don't really want to accept it, you still carry guilt over some things perhaps. And it may take a little while longer, but all of a sudden you're ready to accept 100%. This is what happened. Now get on with things because that's what life is. Life is like that river. It's got, it needs to move. It doesn't, doesn't do well in blocking. So... What I'd like you to do if you're up to self-growth, like I was, and I still am because I'm still learning different elements, is find out what your bottom line is. Does it come from the mental and that whole thought of I'm not good enough? Is it I'm unlovable? You'll know. You'll know what that is. So you know how you tend to, to react, whether you're tending what I call mental thinking or whether you're emotional. You are loved. People around you love you. Maybe not the ones you want to have love you, but people do. The universe does. The earth does. Other people, other people. The love is there. The love is there for us to accept inside. It doesn't have to be from a specific person. It just floats in the air. We need to be able to bring that inside. And when we do that, everything calms down on the inner world. And then the other element is to get the mind in command. You need to be in command. I used to always say, do you want, I remember hearing a speaker say this and I loved it and I use it a lot at times. Do you want to be the director, the producer and the star of your own movie? Or do you want to be a bit player in somebody else's? This is your insides. This is how you react. Is it working for you? Are you creating what you want? 
Are you understanding when you feel helpless that you are actually going to be triggering all sorts of things? You're going to be triggering your emotion. Helplessness just means it's not the way you want it. So how are you going to handle that? What are you going to do? So the key is to find what's your bottom line and then find out how you defend from going there. Are you just a little insecure? Are you going to fight? Are you going, what are you going to do? What do you do? And it's interesting if you have someone who persistently goes and triggers that trigger, like I had last uh, week. I don't want to do that. I knew that. But how do you stop that sometimes when they don't give up, when they don't listen to you? How do they give up? So you just keep on going. So that's my thought. That's my talk this week. Understand your bottom line. Because then you can work with yourself not to go there and clear out all the other things that are in between. So when you don't go there very often. Now, I really want to thank everybody who's pressing the likes uh, for those that subscribe and make comments. Thank you very, very much for that. I try and answer all of them when I see them co that they've come in. And, and I say try because sometimes I miss them when I go back to try and comment. I, I don't know. I don't know enough yet. So I, I, there's still many things. I'm pretty homesprung. Is that the word? Homespun here. I'm, I'm my own little uh, doing it. Remember my website, normacari.com. You can sign up for my monthly newsletter. My next one, I have to put my next one together. And um, I just want to thank you for listening. And I want you to have a great, great week. So thank you so much.